Hello serverless people, Enrico here. This is like the third video of my series on the solution architect exam. And in this video, I want to explain you the S3 service. So let's get started and see what is S3. So S3 is an object based storage. Basically, you can upload object into the cloud. Uh, files can be anywhere from zero bytes to five terabytes. And there is unlimited storage. You don't have to worry about storage in S3 bucket. There's plenty of it. It's unlimited, basically. And files are stored in so-called containers called buckets. So a bucket is where you store your objects. Remember that when you create a bucket, the uh, S3 is a universal namespace, meaning that the bucket name has to be unique, not just in your account, but worldwide. It's basically a DNS record. So, for example, if you create a bucket called uh, example or sample slash bucket, it's very likely it's gonna it's already taken. It's not you're not able to create it. So, so remember that towards your exam because you will be tested also on this. Remember the, that S3 names are unique, are globally unique. So even though S3 is a global service. Uh, the buckets are created in regions. So when you create a bucket, you have to specify in which region you want to create a bucket. And um, there is no limit, as I said, on number of objects or storage inside the bucket. And the S3 data model is not like, um, it doesn't have any uh, hierarchy or folder structure, but it's basically a path, a path to the object. And let's go through some of the restrictions of the bucket. So you're allowed to create uh, 100 buckets per account, but I think it can be increased to 1000 if you request through support. As we said, uh, bucket names should be globally unique as they are also DNS records. Bucket ownership is not transferable. So once it's created, it's yours. And buckets cannot be nested. So let's say you cannot create buckets inside another bucket. And last one is name and region cannot be changed once the bucket has been created. Now let's uh, move to the uh, object. So the object concept is um, basically the objects are the entities that are stored inside the S3 bucket. And once you upload an object inside the S3 bucket, you will receive a 200 OK response. Remember that because I remember a few questions on the exam asking which is the uh, HTTP code you receive when you successfully up update, um, upload sorry, an object on S3. So it's 200K standard HTTP code. Then when you upload an object in S3, it's not just an object, but it's composed by different uh, factors. So object consists of a key, which is basically the object name and it's like unique identifier inside the bucket then it's composed by the uh, value, which is basically the data, the bytes that compose the uh, object, that there is um, metadata, which is the data um, about the data that you, have, that you have uploaded, and it's composed of a set of like a uh, key pair mapping. There's also a um, diversion ID, which is basically a signature um, useful to identify uniquely the object, that version of the object. Then there is like sub resources, which provide additional information for an object. And also there is the ACL, the access control information to help uh, to control the access to a specific object. And um, the metadata of the object are composed by two different types. The uh, system metadata, which you cannot uh, modify, only S3 can modify these values and the user defined metadata. So when you upload an object, you can decide to add uh, custom metadata to an object in order to, I don't know, if you want to specify your custom values you need for your user logic, you basically can add metadata in the, to the object. And we already said the, that the object can have a maximum uh, size of five terabyte. So from zero to five terabyte is the allowed size for a single object. And another very important concept on S3, and what, and this is going to be asked for sure on the exam, is the consistency model. So how the data consistency work on S3? There are two basic concepts, very important. Read after write, which means every time there is a new uh, put, a new object in the bucket, it's going to be ready to read as soon as it's been uploaded. Meaning that basically files are ready just after being uploaded. Second concept is eventual consistency, meaning that on the 
on like a put action of writing an existing object or on a delete uh, action, deleting an object inside the bucket. There is eventual consistency, meaning the new object or the delete object will be eventually uh, ready, meaning that if you call a get object or any other action just after the um, or write put or delete action, it can be possible to get like stale versions of the object. But then if you wait like a few seconds, you will get the latest version. So that's why it's called eventual consistency, meaning that eventually you're going to get the latest version. We eventually mean it's not taking hours. It's going to take just a few seconds because of course S3 is a distributed um, service. So let's move now on the S3 storage classes. And as you can see, there are different classes. Each of them has like a um, specific or let's say a suggested use case. And um, I find this uh, document very useful to understand the different classes with the different features. So let's actually go through a quick list. So it's, it's S3 standard, S3 intelligent tiering, S3 standard infrequent access, S3 one zone infrequent access, S3 one zone infrequent access, S3 Glacier and S3 Glacier Deep Archive. So as you can see from this uh, graph, S3 standard is for general purpose storage. S3 intelligent theorem basically use uh, machine learning to understand which is the best class for your data. So if you have like unpredictable um, data usage, maybe you should choose this one. Then you have S3 standard infrequent access if you have infrequently accessed data that um, you know requ requires rapid retrieval meaning that if you when you require the data it's going to be available immediately then you have the same class bit but with one zone meaning that you can save uh, the cost because the data is replicated only in one zone so the, the data is actually not replicated in different availability zone then you have a glacier for like long-term backups and data archives that can have a retrieval option from one minute to 12 hours of course you're gonna pay for the retrieval and then you have deep archive which is basically long-term digital preservation for data that is access to say here is saying one twice in a year but usually it's for like you know compliance data that needs to be stored for a long time and while we scroll down here, there are like few characteristics about S3 storage classes. As you can see, uh, they are designed for 11 nines durability and then explains to you how this is achieved. It's basically achieved by, you know, replicating the data among three different availability zone. As you scroll this document, basically for the S3 standard, it says general purpose storage for active frequently accessed data with, you know, millisecond accents and you have to remember these uh, kind of use cases for the exam because usually they're not going to ask you, you know, how many nines of durability has the S3 standard classes, but they usually ask you which is the best classes for this use case and for these um, for the general purpose of S3, S3 standard is the best choice. Then we go on the uh, intelligent tiering and basically the usually the exam questions are around you have unpredict unpredictable, you know, access to the S3 bucket, so you don't know if the access is uh, frequent, frequent or infrequent access. Maybe it can it can make sense to uh, apply this uh, class since it's gonna be AWS that's gonna decide based on your use which is the best class for your data. Then moving on the uh, let's say infrequent access uh, classes. There are two. There is this one, the standard one, and there is the one zone. Basically, when you need like high availability and rapid uh, retrieval S3 standard with, with cost saving, you choose this one, which is infrequent access data, meaning that you don't need the data um, a lot during your, you know, based on your use case. But you want the same um, high availability of the S3 standard class. And this is great, they say, for long-term storage, backups, and disaster recovery. It has a low uh, cost per gig storage, and it charges you for a retrieval fee, of course, because this is like the infrequent access. Then you have the one zone, which basically has the same performance as the um, class that you've just seen, so the S3 standard infrequent access zone, but is stored only in a single um availability zone 
meaning that if um, this is like a deal exactly for secondary backups or for workload that can be easily recreated. So it's not for, you know, um, sensible data that you need to be sure that they're not, they don't get uh, lost. Then we go to a kind of a different class, which basically is for more like archive and long-term archive. And this is for like data that are not are not frequently accessed, meaning these are data that are needed to be stored because you need this data for compliance, basically. Then we go to a kind of a different S3 classes. Of course, they are still on S3, but S3 Glacier and S3 Glacier Deep Archive. So S3 Glacier gives like a low cost durable archive with low retrieval fees. And this is meant for like, you know, data archive that needs to be um, retrieve not a lot let's say in a year and you have three retrieval speeds and of course based on the one they choose the price is going to change you can basically retrieve the file from like one minute to up to 12 hours then we go to the let's say the lowest uh, cost cloud storage for s3 and um, is the glacier deep archive and this is for as we said long-term digital preservation of data which is access uh, once or twice in a year. He has two retrieval speeds. Basically, uh, you have the standard one within 12 hours, and you have the book within 48 hours. So as we said, uh, you don't need to know all the characteristics of these classes. You need to know for each classes the use case that you will use it. So this is important to remember this table. All right, I hope this video was useful for like an introduction on S3. Uh, the next video will be around S3 security, S3 encryption and S3 versioning and also lifecycle management. So stay tuned and remember to subscribe to get the notification for the new videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Cheers.